smack of my god, people. Well, I was asked by somebody very cool. She said, and believe me, she's a Sammy Hagar fan. She likes Van Hagar. She likes Sammy Hagar. Has absolutely no problem with my disdain for the guy. But that makes her cool. But she said to me, I would like for you to make a video to explain why you don't like Sammy Hagar. And I'll do it. Now, unlike a lot of Sammy Hagar fans, she accepts it. She has no problem with it. But I've had many arguments, which I don't anymore. I don't even bother with Hagar fans because there's certain, there's certain uh, an element of Sammy Hagar fans that like to live on lies. That don't look up facts. And they're very hypocritical too. And a lot of things. I'm not talking about all Sammy Hagar fans. And I also got to say, everybody out there that likes Sammy Hagar, loves Van Hagar, that's cool with me. I don't like the guy. Okay? If you have a problem with me not liking him, that's your problem, not mine. Because I have no problem with you liking him. But, you know, uh, you're a pickle whistler. If you're going to be bothered by this video, you are a pickle whistler. After I get done talking about what I feel about him musically, that's a personal thing. But everything I got to say after that are facts. Stone cold facts how this guy is so full of shit it's not even funny. But I will start with this. When I was a little kid, it, this isn't the album cover, but my brother had the first Montrose album. And the first Montrose album he had, because he was stationed in Germany, was a cartoon of a girl with four breasts. And I was like, ooh, I want to hear this. So I listened to it. I really like this album. Now, I will say this. Um, I think Sammy is the weak link on this album, actually. Uh, the next album, Paper Money. Not that good, in my opinion. And honestly, and I know a lot of people don't share this opinion with me, but um, I like Gamma more than the first Montrose album. This is where Ronnie Montrose, the other band. These two albums I'll put over the first, that first Montrose album any day. But this one I hate. <laughs> Gamma 3 is just shitty, but Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 is great. But you know, okay. I like the first uh, Montrose album, even though I think Sammy's a weak link, I still like the album. Musically, I think it's pretty kick-ass. Van Hagar, I'm sorry, I just don't like it at all. From the get-go, the first time I heard that single on the radio, Why Can't This Be Love? Garbage. My friend had an extra ticket to see the 5150 tour. Big Van Halen fan, classic Van Halen, that I said, fuck, for free, I'll go see um, Eruption, but BTO also opened, which I'm a very casual BTO fan. I, I grew up on a lot of their hits on the radio, so I went to go see BTO also, and uh, boy, BTO was much better. I mean, Van Hagar was terrible, terrible. I mean, I thought it was just shit. Then I saw the OU81 tour where it was uh, Monsters of Rock. I went really for Metallica. Scorpions were there, and I dig Dokken, so I went for those bands. I was all the way up front, but after the Scorpions played, I went to the Nosebleeds and watched it because I went with a friend and, I, you know, he wanted to see Van Hagar. I mean, we got separated, but I just stayed up there and then after the show went to his car. Actually, not even after the show. I walked out after Eruption. I didn't want to see no more. Um, it was just horrible. But let's, uh, that, that's all I got to say about Van Hagar. Van Halen, to me, is my favorite band formed in America. Formed in America. I know some are from, you know, the, the brothers are from, you know, uh, Amsterdam and so on. But Formed in America, my favorite band, best band I ever saw live was Van Halen in the 80s. The classic, man, David Lee Roth was the greatest front man ever I've ever seen. I've ever seen. You know, you can, you can dispute that, but you're not going to win with me. You have your favorite front man, I have mine, okay? No, no Nobody I've ever seen front of band can hold a crowd in the palm of his hands like Dave did. It was, I can't express it in words. You had to be there to know what I'm talking about. All right, now let's, get, now, now let's go into the bullshit that this guy has said. Now, I got to say, a lot of Van Hagar fans always say the same thing too. Well, man, you all blame Sammy, but you know Eddie. 
Yeah, I blame Eddie too, man. He had a lot to do with the music. I didn't like the music. To me, it sounded like classic Van Hagar, classic Van Halen, neutered. So I will say Eddie is to blame as much as Sammy, uh, as far as Van Hagar music goes. So we got that out of the way, you Van Hagar fans. Uh, I know, you know, oh, Eddie, are you going to blame Eddie? Yeah, I'm going to blame Eddie. Of course I'm going to blame him. Um, and, you know, Eddie, I love Eddie. He's my favorite guitar player of all time, but he's done some shitty things. You know, especially what he's done to Michael Anthony. I totally don't agree with it. Michael Anthony's awesome, and I think he got fucked over. I mean, I know, I don't know if some of you know this, but um, <clears throat> when uh, Wolfgang, they finally announced Wolfgang was the bass player, they changed the album cover of Van Halen 1 and put Wolfgang there instead of Michael Anthony, and they quickly took it down because a lot of people were pissed off about that. And, you know, uh, Women and Children First was altered. You know, you, you didn't have no band members on that album cover. Uh, but anyway, so now that we got the, Van, the San, uh, Eddie Van Halen's to blame, I get it. I agree. I agree with you Van Hagar fans when it comes to that. Now, what do, don't I like musically about Sammy Hagar? Well, I don't like his voice. I think his voice, to me, sounds like nails through a chalkboard. I just don't like the way he sounds. That's my personal musical opinion, which is personal. It doesn't apply to all of you. Uh, his lyrics? My God. They're fucking horrible. And, you know, and his music, his solo stuff? Terrible. I, I was aware of Sammy Hagar before he joined uh, Van Halen. I heard Three Lock Box and uh, There's Only One Way to Rock and Heavy Metal and... Uh, what is it? I Can't Drive 55. All those songs do nothing for me. I just don't like it musically. I don't like the lyrics. And I don't like his voice. All right. Uh, so let's go. Let's go on. All right. The first, the first bullshit. And they're not in order. There's so many of them. I got three pages of bullshit from this guy. And what I'm about to talk about is facts. Facts. Okay. Number one. Eddie Van Halen teaching Michael Anthony bass parts before a tour. Sammy Hagar, and it's on YouTube. I'm not pulling no clips from YouTube. Please search if you don't believe me, because I fear putting clips into this video from other videos may get this blocked. But Eddie Van Halen, in an interview, said he had to teach Michael Anthony bass parts in, uh, before they would go on tour. And there's also talk that he played he played, uh, Eddie played bass on some of those classic Van Halen albums. Jury's out on that. I'm not going to talk about that part. What I'm going to talk about, when Eddie said that in an interview, Sammy Hagar automatically went on line, on video, I mean destroying Eddie. How dare you say that about Mikey, that you had to teach him bass before a tour. You're full of shit. And he even said shit like, fuck you, Eddie. I mean, really venomous shit. Now, the reason I bring this up, how Sammy's full of shit, is that in his book, what's it called, Red, or whatever it's called, he says, and I don't have the page here, I have the page and other bullshits he said, but he does say in the book, because somebody showed it to me months, years ago, because I already did an episode about Sammy Hagar's lies on my old podcast, Rock and Metal Combat Podcast, and somebody sent us uh, a paragraph from the book where in the paragraph it says, Sammy says, Eddie had to teach the bass parts to Michael before he went out on the road. He doesn't even remember his own, what he, what he said in his book. He just wants to attack Eddie. I mean, back then. Now he's, now he's dying for Eddie to like talk to him. But he said so much crappy shit about Eddie and then he's like, come on, I don't want to die without, with enemies. Well, you should have never wrote that book and thrown him under the bus so much. Oh, and by the way, to, one thing I will say positive about Sammy was when he got, when the whole thing happened that he was out of Van Halen, Van Hagar, not Van Halen. That shit's Van Hagar to me. When he was out of Van Hagar, I believe it was either 95 or 96, uh, Sammy claimed that Eddie fired him. Eddie claimed that Sammy quit to be a solo artist. I believe Sammy. For some reason, I don't know if I'm 100% true, 
100 percent sure, but I believe that Eddie fired him. That's just one. See, I'm giving a little bit of uh, slack to, to Sammy. That's the one time I believe the guy. Um, all right. Um, oh, okay. So he said Montrose sold over 4 million copies. This album right here. Over 4 million copies in his book. And turns out it just sold over a million. And I'm talking about worldwide. Not like it sold a million in the States and three million everywhere else. No. Worldwide, it's only sold one million. And that's like tame bullshit compared to what's coming up. But that's bullshit number one. In the book read on page 78, he said that he sold out the Oakland Coliseum in 1980. Sold it out in 1980. But what he failed to mention was on that bill was Gloria Sicult who were huge at the time, Triumph, who were becoming kind of huge, and the band that I think sold the most albums in 1980, REO Speedwagon. So it was REO, uh, Blue Oyster Cult, Triumph, and Sammy Hagar. And he doesn't mention the other bands. He said he sold out the Oakland Coliseum. Page 78. What a liar. All right. Uh, page 82 in his book. Um, it, no, not page 82, but he said this in his book in 1982. He said that he played a lot of double nights in a lot of places. Well, uh, my old um, co-host on the Rock Metal Combat podcast did a research on that. And he found out that the only place he played multiple nights, two nights, was in San Francisco. Nowhere else. So there goes another lie. Um, 1984. He claims that... Um, he sold out as many shows as Van Halen. No. That's bullshit. He also claimed that Van Halen became big in 1984, that before they, uh, they had to rope off the arena. I've been seeing Van Halen since 1980. They didn't rope off no arena. And by the way, I didn't see Sammy Hagar come down to Florida. Except, oh, I'll get into that. I did see Sammy, but I'll get into that. Uh, but, no, I'm sorry, Van Halen, he did not sell as much as uh, shows Van Halen. Do your research, you'll find out. He didn't play multiple, I saw the 1984 tour two nights. Sammy Hagar, I believe he did come down for that tour one night. Um, but I didn't go. Of course I wouldn't go, because even before Van Hagar, I wasn't into Sammy. But I didn't dislike the guy as much as I do now because of these blatant lies. Uh, he said he never opened for anybody on the Howard Stern Show since 1979. Another lie. Number one, that Oakland Coliseum show. You think that Sammy Hagar uh, was headlining over the, the band that sold the most that year? Ario Speedwagon or Blue Easter Cult? Maybe Triumph. That, you know. But there's no way. And I saw Sammy Hagar, and I believe it was 81, 82 at the Miami Baseball Stadium, and here's a picture of it, of the shirt. The shirt's a little misleading, but come on. Anybody with a brain would know that Journey was a huge band at the time. He did not headline. Actually, he opened that show. It was Journey on Frontiers, Aerosmith, Rock and Hard Place Tour, Brian Adams, and opening the show was Sammy Hagar, and I saw it. And all I remember about Sammy Hagar that night was he played Whole Lot of Love from Zeppelin and he got a good response to that because he did a cover song. But other than that, it was, I just didn't like it. All right, uh, let's keep going. Oh, and also thanks to somebody on my Almost Human Facebook page called Robert Freeman. He put up this picture of 1980 where you see uh, Sammy Hagar opening uh, a festival with Pat Benatar and Van Halen over him. So... You know, him claiming he was as big as Van Halen? I don't think so. All right, what's the next lie here? Uh, oh, and by the way, Van Hagar also opened for Bon Jovi in Europe, and this is after the fact he was claiming he never opened for nobody in, uh, since 79. Even with Van Hagar, he opened for Bon Jovi. So, there you go. Another lie. Um, oh, and I also saw 
Sammy Hagar opened for Aerosmith like 10 years ago. So yeah, he's still... And, and when he opened for Aerosmith, like, no, yeah, like 10 some, some one years ago, that was also before the fact that he claimed he hasn't opened for anybody since 79. Oh, boy. All right, now, this one I'm going to combine Sammy Hagar and Eddie Trunk, how they're both so full of shit it's not even funny. Um, Sammy claims that on the 1984 tour, they only played eight songs because Eddie would do like a 30-minute guitar solo. Alex would do a 20-minute drum solo. All lies. If you look up online any show from 1984, they played a total of 20 songs, not eight songs. And Eddie Trunk, you know, said he went to see the 84 tour, which I'm sure he did. But, he, you know, the guy is like such a Sammy nutswinger. Uh, he said that, oh... The, uh, you know, he, he claimed Alex did like a 30-minute drum solo and so on. He said Dave came out with a sword for like 15 minutes. Bullshit! You can look it up online. There's a whole show in Montreal. He came out with a sword and it was like maybe, I don't know, two, three minutes tops. And Alex Van Halen as well would do like a two, three-minute tops drum solo. Shit, Michael Anthony's bass solo was, I think, even longer than the drum solo. But still, they played 20 fucking songs. All right, what's next? Oh, this goes out to uh, the Sammy Hagar fans that always say, well, Sammy can sing and Dave can't. That's a matter of personal opinion. I respect your opinion. Me? I love Dave's voice. On those first six Van Halen albums, I loved Little Dreamer. I mean, every song. Because he has this organic, you know, it's not technically great, but it's organic and it's got a personality. Something that I don't hear in Sammy's voice. I don't hear no personality. I hear fakeness. And I love Dave's lyrics too. Great wordsmith. I, it does more for me. I like the organic nature of him. It just seems real. You know? That's what I love about Diamond Dave, man. Now, yeah, he's, his voice is uh, not as good as it used to be. But, you know, in live, you know, he, he performed, man. He wasn't singing every single lyric. But if you were there and caught in the moment... I wouldn't have it any other way. I loved seeing classic Van Halen more than any band back then. Nobody can touch classic Van Halen, in my opinion. The energy, you just had to be there to understand. Um, and anybody that uh, leaves a comment below saying, I saw it, it sucked, you're lying. You are such a liar. All right, now this is the great one. This is the one that I've had many arguments over with Van Hagar fans. When they bring up the fact that they never had a number one album with Dave like that matters. But hey, I'll play along. I'll play along with that. All right, number one album. All right, let me, let me, let me get ready for this. Um, this is true. With, you know, they had a number one single with Jump with Dave, but not a whole album. With Sammy, they had number one albums. 5150, Oh You Wait One Two, For an Unlawful Car and Lodge, and Balance. All went number one. The live one didn't, but they all went number one. Now, if number one albums matter so much, why don't we talk album sales? Oh, sure. Sammy, on many occasions, kept bragging how they sold more, which is a lie, and I'll prove it in a second. But I will say this. Before the Internet... I kind of believed it myself. Well, they had number one albums. They must have sold more. Now, actually, the very first Van Halen album went diamond, which is over $10 million. 1984 went diamond, over $10 million. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't, give a, I don't give a rat's ass about album sales. Some of my favorite bands didn't really sell many albums. But I have to bring this up as an example for number one. Number one albums mean so much. Shouldn't record sales mean that much to you too, Sammy Hagar fans? Two albums, Van Halen 1 and 1984, alone, alone sold more than all Van Hagar albums combined. Don't believe me? Go on the RIAA website and look it up yourself. Here's some more, um, all right, <clears throat> I'll, I'll bring up the sales. 5150 sold 6 million albums, which is great. 
that's a lot of albums. Oh, you wait, one, two, four million. So the first two albums match just the first Van Halen album in sales. Two albums to match one. Uh, for Unlawful Carnal Knowledge, three million. Balance, three million. The live one, two million. Van Halen, over 10 million the first album, five million Van Halen 2. By the way, Van Halen 1 reached 19 on the charts, not number one, 19, and yet sold more than any Van Hagar album. All right? Van Halen 2 went on number six on the chart, not number one, and sold five million. Um, Women and Children First went number six on the chart, three million. Fair Warning, which many, met, not me, my favorite Van Halen is the first one. I love Fair Warning, though. Many think Fair Warning is the best Van Halen album. That one sold two million. That one's, that's the least selling of the, of the 80s Van Halen albums. Diver Down went number three on the charts and sold four million. Uh, 1984 went number two on the charts because Michael Jackson... Thriller, the biggest selling album of the time. I think only the Eagles just eclipsed it, so it's the second biggest selling album of all time. Michael Jackson was number one. Van Halen couldn't eclipse it. Van Halen was at number two. Def Leppard's Pyromania sold a gazillion albums too. That one went number two because of Michael Jackson. Uh, you think uh, 5150 would have went number one over Michael Jackson? Oh, man. You're fucking crazy. But, you know, I've heard Howard Stern say sold more. And when he had Sammy Hager, which you can see on YouTube, he said, you sold more. And this was Sammy's uh, reply to that. Yes, sir. And he says that a lot. He says a lot how he sold more. Lie. Two albums Van Halen did with Dave sold more than all Van Hagar albums combined. Now you throw in uh, Van Halen 2 with 5 million, uh, Women and Children First with 3 million, Fair Warning with 2 million, Diver Down with 4, uh, with 4 million, throw all those together. Van Halen with Dave sold more. Don't care really about album sales, but I have to bring up being number one on the chart is kind of like that story with the tortoise and the hare. You know? The tortoise is going slow, the, you know, the hare, but the tortoise won in the end. My point. So that's 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 one that's one thing that man, I just and I saw that thing, horrible, horrible Van Halen thing called Reels on that network. They said it too, how Van Hagar sold more. I mean you talk about people that don't do their research. Sammy does his research, he just enjoys lying. He's got a different kind of truth. Pun intended. Alright. Um, okay, next in his book. On page 121, Sammy Hagar claims that the album he made, the solo album he made while he was in Van Hagar, called I Never Said Goodbye, went platinum immediately. He said that in his book. But if you do his research as of today, that album only went gold. And you know who played on that album? Eddie Van Halen played bass. You know that's why it went gold. A lot of Van Halen fans bought it for Eddie. On page 122. Uh, he said that 19, uh, the 5150 tour sold out four nights everywhere. Four nights in arenas everywhere. Uh, which, the fact is, no, it didn't. Um, it didn't play multiple nights in all arenas. It played multiple nights in some markets, but not all of them. I know Van, uh, 1984 played two nights at the Hollywood Sportatorium. I was there both nights. 5150 played the same venue one night. Okay? Um, oh, and by the way, uh, Eat em and Smile Tour at the same venue, two nights. Uh, all right, now um, here's something for all you Sammy Hagar fans that you might not like this. And I didn't do the math, but I know it has to be over 10 albums that Sammy Hagar has released. David Lee Roth with his solo EP that went platinum, Eat em and Smile that went double platinum, and Skyscraper that went one million, and Little Ain't Enough went gold. Those albums alone, that what I just talked about, sold, oversold all of Van Hag uh, Van Sammy Hagar albums. Every one of them. 
Just bringing that up to you Sammy fans that think number one albums are so important. Uh, and you also got to remember, Sammy Hagar joined the biggest band on the planet at the time. I mean, it was poised to be a success, no matter what. Uh, hmm, what else? Let's see here. Uh, oh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This is in his book, too. When they were inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Irvin Azoff told Sammy, no, look, we just want to induct the original Van Halen. And Sammy got pissed and said, uh, that he was in the band longer, and that he sold more. Wrong on both accounts. David Lee Roth was in the band for 11 years, from 1974 to 1985. And I already talked about who sold more. So there goes another line. All right, on page 234, um, he says in his book, he had five platinum albums for Geffen, played multiple arenas, before he joined Van Hagar. Where the truth of the matter is, before he joined Van Hagar, he had three gold albums. Some of them went platinum. I think VOA went platinum, maybe Sandy Hampton, but I'm pretty sure Three Lock Box is still at gold. So that's another line. You know, five, five million platinum. Give me a break. Even to today, it's still not even five million. So I don't think it's even half that much, or probably half that much. All right, now, is this the final story? Yeah, this is the final one. This is the final lie. And this is why I think Eddie Van Halen fired Sammy Hagar. When Howard Stern was doing the movie Private Parts, he wanted the original Van Halen to record for the album. And their manager at the time, I believe it was Ray Davies, who managed um, Rush and was married to Alex Van Halen's sister, I believe, told Howard Stern, one million dollars will do it. Now, Sammy was still in the band, and they were willing to get Dave back and record a song for this private parts for one million dollars. That's why I believe Eddie did fire Sammy, because hey, they were willing to get back with Dave. But anyway, that's the end of all this. Everything I just said are facts. I'm not making anything up. If you want to go on the RIAA, if you want to look at concert attendance and all that stuff, you know, Sammy said that Van Halen played to arenas that were half full. They were roped off. That's a lie. I've seen every Van Halen tour from 1980 to 1984 with Dave. They were all sold out. I'm not sure about Women and Children First or Fair Warning, but they were super packed. I know for sure Diver Down was sold out. I know that for sure. And 84, both nights. Diver Down was sold out both nights. And uh, 1984 was sold out both nights. And Sammy Hagar didn't come down here uh, during the Diver Down era. But he did open for Aerosmith, Journey, and Brian Adams. You know, the guy that hasn't opened. So, uh, hey, man, there you go. I have a disdain for this guy. There's a lot of bands I dislike. But I think I dislike this guy the most because of all his fucking lies. He tries to discount, you know... Uh, Classic Van Halen, like it wasn't that popular. He was opening for Van Halen when Dave was in the band. Show me one festival where he was over Van Halen. Now, I wanted to keep this for last. For the people out there that are probably saying, or will probably leave comments or thinking, God, this guy, this guy, man, what? A, he ain't got no life up. Huh? He's going to find this, like, you know, why is he so worked up over this stuff? Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Why would you leave a comment to a perfect stranger about how I feel about something? Aren't you as bad? No, actually, you're worse. I never understood the concept of leaving people stupid comments on, on videos, on, on YouTube. I, I just, I, if I see, see, see somebody that says like stuff that I don't agree with, I ain't going to challenge them. It's a personal opinion. I'm talking about musical opinion. Now, if I see somebody write something like, you know, Van Hagar sold more, oh, I'm going to say something about it. Because it's facts, you know? And also to the people out there that say, man, I don't understand how any, and I've seen this a lot, I don't understand how people don't like Sammy Hagar's voice. Well, you know what? Maybe you'll understand this. You know your shit don't stink and there's bands you don't like. 
bands that other people like. Do you understand now? Do you get it now? It's a personal musical opinion. Stop pretending your shit don't stink. Seriously. Me? Hating Hagar makes me happy. And I don't care what anybody thinks. You know why? Because nobody's going to take away my happiness. Schmack em a gob. For those that use social media, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And you can join the Almost Human 56 Facebook page. All links are in the description below. A lot of you been asking for it. Schmack em a gob merch. Yes, many types of shirts, long sleeves, short sleeves, hoodies, you name it. Plus other stuff like shower curtains and bedspreads and mugs and socks and clocks and oh I can go on but why should I the link is below just click the link below in the description for all the schmack a gob merch order yours now schmack a gob hey check out my podcast the Vieira Vault on Spreaker YouTube and iTunes subscribe the links are below Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, Rat Sound Review Network has plenty of shows to choose from. Like Rat Sound Review, where they discuss the latest rock and metal news, as well as interviews and albums. Album vs. Album, the King Diamond Podcast, with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and sometimes this guy. Smack him a gob! Ralph Vieira is also on our network with the Vieira Vault. There's also Old Man Metal's Musings, where he discusses heavy metal and beer. Music is Life with Lou Mavs. The Right Opinion for Those Who Love Politics, a South Park podcast called Suck My Balls, The Infinite Fringe, a watch-along wrestling show called Beyond Bushido, Extradivarius Guitarist, The Timo Tolki Podcast, and The Great Harry Barnett with I Don't Even Like Podcasts. So check out RatsaleReview.com or search Ratsal Review on YouTube, Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and more.